The Acumatica Manufacturing Edition is comprised of multiple modules. There's a core set of modules, which is the bills of material, production orders, and MRP. There are also additional modules, which is estimating and product configurator. But what we're going to, and, and the product itself actually fits in a variety of different manufacturing environments from make the stock to make the order, engineer to order, project centric, repetitive job shop, and batch processing. What we're going to focus on today is in a make to stock environment. So, first, I'm going to go into inventory and look at my one inventory item that we're going to be focused on. So this is an end item. It's a Keurig model 450. And within the replenishment side, you'll notice that I need to always maintain 20 in safety stock for this particular item. Now I've also have different policies within here. So I have a minimum order quantity of one. I have a lot size of one. The differences in these is how I manufacture these. So if I had this manufacturing uh, minimum set to 10, and I had demand for eight, MRP is going to recommend that you make 10. If I have demand for 15, MRP will recommend that you make 15. Same analogy on the lot size. If I have demand for eight, and I have this set to 10, then MRP is going to recommend you make 10. If I have demand for 15, MRP is going to recommend that you make 20, because you do them in lots of 10. Now, once I've done this and I have different sales orders that come into the system. So I can either do this from a sales order standpoint or I can do this from a um, forecast standpoint. But once I have different sales orders within the system, I have the capability to go out and run MRP for any items that are not attached to a production order. So once I've gone out and I go through the regeneration process, then it's going to render into what's called an MRP display screen. So I've actually set up a master production schedule that we're going to look at, and I'm going to take a look at that particular one. So this master production schedule is set up for this particular item. It's I've got two different mass production schedules that I'm going to make, and basically what this tells me is that I need to have 500 Keurigs into my facility by 914 of 2018. Now based upon that need, it has backward scheduled anything else that I need to buy or produce. In this particular case, I need to buy these three particular items and I need 500 of these. It takes into account lead time, it takes into account uh, lot size, minimum order quantities, maximum order quantities, safety stock. It looks at any of these, all the demand that's coming in from sales orders, from, uh, from forecasting. It also looks at all the supply coming in from existing purchase orders and existing production orders or mass production schedules similar to this case. And it will run through its engine and come back and tell you how many you need to make and, and what you need to buy to satisfy that. So you'll notice that I, I need these components by the 14th in order to do my final assembly. And within here, I've got a seven day lead time actually for every single one of these. Now I also buy these from different vendors. Now within here, if I need to change my vendor, I do have that capability. If I have multiple vendors, I could change this vendor. From here, you can actually choose a, you can have different uh, parts and things on your purchase order, but I've selected this one that I want to generate a purchase order from. It brings in the vendor that I had over here, brings in the, the pieces that I need. I select create and it creates the next purchase order. So this is purchase order 593. When I come into purchasing, now that I'm in, now that I'm wearing my purchasing hat, I come in and I take a look at purchase order 593. And here's what I need that I've just created within from MRP. Now when I go back to MRP, that is no longer on my MRP display. So as I come in and I look at the exact same list that I started with, you'll notice that that housing has been removed because I've already taken action on that and I've, I've satisfied that supply. Now I mentioned forecasting as well. 
Uh, so within the forecasting side, you do have the capability to come in and, and create forecasts. This is based on sales history. So you can have as many years of history that you wish to look at. Uh, you can set up whether this is a regular or a seasonal item. Uh, growth rate is usually defined within an item class. So you can specify, I want this particular item class to be increased by 10 or 20%. The factor is how heavily you wish to weight last year's sales versus any prior year sales that you've included. You can break this down by month. Uh, you can make it dependent to where any existing sales orders consume the forecast. And then you can sort this either by a specific customer, a specific warehouse, specific inventory item, or a specific item class. The, once you've run through that calculation, it comes back and gives you a quantity for each one of these particular items. You do have, if you have security, the ability to make a change. So if four doesn't look right, I can make this to 10, or if I want to increase that to 10. Now what I can do is actually just come in and pick and choose whichever ones I wish to convert, or I can process all. And once I've done that, then it's available for the next time when you pick, when you run MRP and it goes in and it's calculated within the MRP side. So that's primarily how the uh, make the stock functions work within the Acumatica Manufacturing Edition. If you care for a deeper dive demonstration based on your own organization's functionality and requirements, please reach out to your local Acumatica reseller or contact the number you're seeing up on your screen or via info at acumatica.com.